Hello and welcome to the Tour de France podcast with humansinvent.com. Today we're again on the Mega Smeralda, today docked 20 kilometres up the coast from Calvi, where a stunning and spectacular stage finished. My name is Richard Moore, and for this final podcast from Corsica, I'm joined by the ubiquitous Daniel Freib. And after the huge success of our Italian friend Ciro's appearance on last night's pod, we've got another international guest today, Julien Preto, a French journalist with Reuters. Bienvenue, Julien. Welcome. Thank you. Julien, oh, you work speak French. Exactly the same with you. So really? I'm, I'm, I'm French, French only. Daniel's not French. He just not thinks French he is. Richard is definitely not French. I'm not French. French. pronunciation of so, but Julia, Julia, you are you are you're born and bred in, in France. Yes. But you speak impeccable English. Oh, which? Can uh, you maybe speak slightly more accented English? So that, yeah. Because that was that one of the, that that really well the hits Chiro, of Chiro yeah. last night. You want a French accent? So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's no problem. I can do that. If you can ham it up a bit, that would be great. Thank you. Today, chaps, well, let's talk first about, about today's stage, final stage on Corsica. And I'd be interested as well to hear Julian's thoughts on the tour's visit to Corsica. But, Daniel, what I heard, there was a bit of disagreement between you two about whether today had been an exciting stage or not. One in the end by Simon Gerrans. I mean, we're grateful for small mercies these days, aren't we? For, for, for fairly, fairly meagre action, you know, especially after three days. And um, we're not used to seeing that anything really happen on a sort of well, not that there were any great splits on GC, but there no. were some splits that were people losing time. It was difficult. It was, it was always the risk that. It was stunning, um, wasn't it? Yeah, well, and I mean, there was there was always the risk that, that a team would go to the front and really drill it and and cause some serious damage. I think that could have happened, but on the other hand, I think there were a lot of teams quite, this is quite a happy for radio chat yeah, to be I mean, controlling it. Yeah, the, the, you know, a lot of people said that somebody will lose the tour in Corsica. One of the overall contenders will be out, and that's not happened. Julian, what's been your impression today and of the first three days in Corsica? Well, very nice for three days. I mean, the first two days were quite spectacular in terms mm. of action. I mean, the first day especially, for bad reasons, though. Well, there's one, you know, overall contender who fell behind, so it's Thomas, Thomas de Gent. I mean, Thomas de Gent, yeah. forget yeah, about yeah, him, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, I think he's ill. That's for well, today's what? stage, I mean, it's... I mean, it was basically not neutralised until the last climb, mm. which is probably modern cycling. Anyway. Modern cycling. Oh, what have been your what's been your impression of Corsica? Have you enjoyed the Corsican sojourn? Yeah, well, I've, I've been here on holidays many times already. So it's no surprise here. Where Where are you from? Are you from Paris? Or? Oh no, I'm from northern France. I was born next to Lens. Mm-hmm. You know football. You know, yeah, Eric Black. Black. It was a big deal for the tour to come to Corsica for the hundredth edition. Uh, do you feel it's been a success? Do you feel that the Corsicans have enjoyed having the tour here? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I think they were rather indifferent at first, and mm. uh, that's probably the feeling we all got from Porto Vecchio before the start. Mm. But it was it not just that there are not many people there, and that's the impression that I've got. It's not a lack of enthusiasm. It's just that simply are not many people in Corsica. Yeah, not many people living there, and it's no. still early for the holidays. I mean, mm. had the tour started a week later. There have been a lot of people on holidays there, so probably much better. But and not many people seem to have come here for the tour. We've oh, talked about no. this last couple no, of days. It's no. quite expensive to yeah, yeah. go on holidays, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I spoke to a few today, and they were, um, you know, they talked about their pride uh, at holding the tour and how it had taken too long to come, um, and uh, you know, only positive things from the from the Corsicans themselves. I think it, the opinion has been quite diverse. I think the journalists always grumble the most and we have grumbled because I think we've probably had um, the, the, the most sort of challenging time here with all the logistical difficulties of, of getting to press rooms on boats etc etc teams I think have had it quite easy really mm. I think they've been very pleased with the way things have been organised you know they've been able to get to the finish um, their hotels fairly quickly most nights mm. when, when will the tour be back to Corsica do you think? 200 Tour, maybe. No, I, I guess earlier. I didn't see any huge problems. But it would have to be there'd have to be a grand départ here. It couldn't really travel here and then back in, could it? In the um, middle of the tour, would yeah, it do in that? Between, you know, between Pyrenees and the Alps, mm. you know, why not? Mm. One stage, maybe. Mm. Uh, yeah, well, that'd be interesting. I mean, it, it is a. If Corsica featured later on in the race, these stages, these roads could provide a real, mm. uh, you know, really interesting racing. I think. I think just because it's come so early, 
people are just feeling their way, way around at the moment. But like I say, I, I am surprised that we are heading off Corsica without more damage having been done either to GC or to the, the, the favourites. Yeah, a fair amount of damage has been done, like you say, not to the favourites, but you know, there's been a lot, there's been a fair few crashes, some fairly significant crashes. Um, well, the, the significant crashes in the sense that they will, I think, affect tomorrow's stage yeah. of team time trial, because some there are certain teams that are quite severely weakened. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, thinking of, of Team Sky, Julia, you were talking about Garen Thomas. You know, he's sort of struggling with a, a fractured bone in his pelvis or hip, and he had to be helped onto his bike today before he even set off the stage. He then spent a lot of stages as, as last man in the bunch and came in in that group nine minutes down. What are your thoughts about Garrett Thomas? It's a very short time trial, 25 kilometres, mm. so there's nine men, so it's going to be a very small rotation. So I don't think it will you know, hamper the chances that much. Uh, Do you not think Although, that although it, it, it could have come down to maybe couple of seconds yeah the end, it, so. it, it means yeah it means that but it means from his point of view I think he was talking tonight as though he doesn't expect to stay with the team and then it'll be a case of trying to make the time limit and yeah. being such a short stage it'll be a very unforgiving time limit it'll be difficult yeah I mean he, he, if they could have chosen one guy to lose for the team time trial it certainly wouldn't have been him either yeah. I mean he's one of the bigger engines and also got a lot of experience riding um, in kind of group event in team pursuit etc and they're usually the guys that go best particularly on the short short course like tomorrow Julian you were saying that you thought Garen Thomas should leave Sky what's your reason for that I, I think he's uh, been nursed and been too much protected maybe and I mean if he wants to win a classic which he obviously can I mean he mm. has what it takes yeah. definitely he's, he's actually one of my you know, one of the riders I prefer mm. in the peloton well, he's, he's extremely cool, but he's so talented. I mean, you see him on the bike; he's <coughs> fantastic. And if if he if he wants to win, let's say Paris Roubaix, for instance, he has to you know bite the dust a little bit more. And I don't think he's been doing that. This guy, I mean, what? training in in, in in those training camps earlier in the season, I don't think he's ridden enough. You know, in you know, awful conditions. Mm. What what what? Um what team would you see him in? Um, do you feel that he's in sort of too much of a comfort zone with Team Sky? Is that the issue? Yes, yes, I, I think. Yeah. I mean, he could come back. What kind of Sky rider? Is. What kind of rider can he become? I mean, you mentioned classics, but you know he he's comes from a pursuiting background as well. Does he have the potential to be a you know Bradley Wiggins or somebody like that physically? Physically, yes, I think. But mm. does he want to? Well, that's another question. Mm. I mean, there is that issue of. You know, comfort zones, various teams being comfort zones, and it really applies to almost every nationality. There is a team, oh, you know, for instance, the Australians, it's. Well, it we'll, get on seem, to fr- we'll get on to French cycling maybe late, later well, on, Julian. <laughs> you know, it can seem um, like a comfort zone, you know, for the Australians to be at Greenwich. I remember I had a conversation with them, um, Rolf Aldog recently, the former Team Mobile manager, and we were talking about. German riders of a certain generation a few years ago, and, and you know, not having really lived up to their potential. And he said, "Well, with you know, when you had Gerolsteiner and Team Gerolsteiner and Team Mobile, there were too many German professionals. It was too easy to turn pro for and Germans." Milram for a bit as and well, and Milram it? exactly. And so I, I'm not sure. I mean, Mil- I think what? it's Milram. Mil- <laughs> Remember I, them? I think it's counterbalance. I think often riders do perform better in teams where the environment is familiar and but you know I see what you're saying I think the riders are, are paid pretty well at Team Sky and it's certainly it's the environment that he's been in throughout his career isn't it you know it wouldn't perhaps do him any harm to change and challenge himself for you know for one two seasons Today's stage um, won by Simon Gerrans you mentioned Orica Greenedge there that sort of eased some of the embarrassment perhaps of, of Saturday when their bus became stuck at the yeah. finish um, and it, Garen said it was a stage that he targeted for 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 three months that he'd been looking at for three months. Now it was a it was a, a great and a surprising stage win. You you didn't even think it was Simon Garen. Well, you? that was mainly wishful thinking because in the, in our um, predictions. predictions competition, I had 
Impy down the second place, so I'm just very excited about mm. Impy and Sagan coming mm. first and second. You're very confidently yelling at the television. I look, yeah. uh, you know, as a commentator, it was declaring me. Garen's the winner. I did, I did. There you were shouting, a lone voice in the press. <laughs> and showing, it wasn't Garen's, it was Impy, it was Impy, it was Impy. And everybody well, looking at you in a bemused yeah. fashion while Twitter is alive with the Garen's victory. Well, look, Daniel. look, Richard, I did not know that Simon Garrett was that quick in a sprint. They could beat Peter Sagan. No, no not in many fact, people Tan did. Man, is oh, it, esteemed colleague it, Anthony yeah, Tan, yeah. promised to parade world. naked yeah, um, yeah. if Peter Sagan was beaten yeah. in that sprint. Peter Sagan hasn't been the same since he grew a little goatee beard. It seems to have slowed him down. Well, I think, the only thing about Garrett is he was really perfectly let out if you, you see the way yeah. they, you know took the last band yeah. he probably had much more speed than thanks Sagan to, the, yeah. you know, yeah. 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 He, thanks to Impy so perhaps Daniel yeah. should get some kind of bonus point for yeah. we'll for raise that. that with the chairman yeah. tomorrow I was interested in the press conference Garen's I think he's on two or three occasions in the press conference he talks about what a great season Green Edge had had last year um, but hadn't but you know they were just missing a Tour de France stage win but you know, I thought that was a little bit um, sort of window dressing so their results. Yeah, w- window dressing their results. I mean, I think they've underachieved, to be honest, in their first 18 months in the. Have in they the underachieved, or are they just a team, as we spoke about the other day, with good riders rather than. Well, one they won, great I think they rider. won 33 races last year, mm. but, you know, for a team packed with good time trials and good sprinters, I think that's maybe less impressive than it sounds. Mm. Well, they could get another one tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, the pressure's slightly off them now. I think. You know, they might just block them now, I think, now that the pressure's off. In the meantime, uh, we're, we're, the stage today did shake things up a little bit. David Miller of Garmin Sharp uh, slipped down to seventh overall, still just one second behind the leader. But I spoke to him this morning at the start in Ajaxio uh, about his first couple of days where he seemed to be in really good form, including his fourth place in Saturday's first stage, about his thoughts ahead of today's stage and his prospects for perhaps taking the yellow jersey and choose his team time trial. You're pleased at how you're going, because you're obviously doing very well, or disappointment at that missed opportunity yesterday. Mixed emotions, I think, would be the best description. I know from all my years that opportunities like that happen once in a blue moon. Once every 13 years. Once every 13 years, Richard, exactly. Not even, because the last time, you know, you, you either get it in a clear-cut situation mm. where, it's, where it's the best man, or I'll, I'll be perfectly frank, I mean, it's, it has been a sporting merit, but it's been a, a lot of luck as well for me. So I, I've, I've been blessed with good luck, and that was a bit of bad luck. So. How, how do you explain that fourth place on day one? You obviously were lucky to miss a crash. What were you doing, first of all, so far up? And, and, and at what point in the sprint did you think, I'm going to go for this? I was, just, I was actually feeling so good. I mean, when you feel good, it's easy to sit at the front. And that was the thing. I was just literally, it felt like I'd just been racing a few Ks. So it was just, I was just picking gaps. I was incredibly lucid. And strong. I mean, if we go to sprint, I've always been able to sprint, but normally I don't get in the way of sprinters, and and I'm not good enough to match the pure sprinters. But when I'm fresh like that at the end of the race, I can I can do that. You had to take one or two little risks. There was a little gap you came through on the final bend. I mean, you were you had a bit between your teeth at that point. I just got carried away. I got excited. I love racing. I just got carried away. You know. I mean, it's it's. I can't help myself. I promised the guys. I promised Christian in particular because after the Giro, where. I was right at the sharp end as well on the first stage and got taken out in a crash and it then ruined my whole race. I promised myself that I wouldn't do that here on the first stage and yet I get in the race situation and I'm like a, a junior again. You know, sometimes emotion just takes over and you was do there, things. Was there any point in that finishing streak where you, you, you actually began to began to believe, think, I might have this? Not really, it was just uh, it was just fun. It was more kind of like, oh, I don't know, give the sprinters a go. Yeah. You know, it was, like, it was quite funny, you know. I was actually faster than a lot of the pure sprinters and... Yeah, have just, you looked at fun. the overhead? No, I haven't yeah. seen it. But you look faster than, than, than Van Poppel, for example. You yeah, I was coming up on everybody. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I could feel the sprint happening. I could feel how strong I was, and I was just seeing myself overtaking sprinters and catching the guys in front. And it was. It was Cavend- a- Cavendish have a little word with you yesterday? Ah, he's getting a little tap on the back. Yeah, I got a lot of kudos from everybody actually oh, yesterday. Quite, everyone was just like, "Wow, nice sprint!" So that was, that was that's always nice when your colleagues. Are, and are you thinking, you know, team time trial tomorrow? Last time there was a team time trial, Garmin and Sharp won that. Are you thinking that, you know, if you can stay in contention today, there's, there's a possibility there? Well, yeah, I mean, there's a possibility, but today is the number one objective. It's, it's going to be a really hard day. To, we always knew today would be the hardest day in Corsica. And considering how hard yesterday was, that's a bit da- a daunting prospect for everyone. So let's get through today, and then we'll switch into TTT mode. You're listening to the Tour de France podcast with humansinvent.com and Sharp. 
thank you for listening to our podcast. I'm sitting here in the bar of the Mega Smeralda with Julian Preteau and Daniel Freib. Since we have you here, Julian, we, we, we're going to get on in the final segment to talk about tomorrow's team time trial. And we have a, an interview with Rolf Aldag of uh, Omega Pharma Quick Step, who's going to tell us a little bit about their approach to that event. But Julian, for this section, we were going to quiz you a little bit about French cycling. And Pierre Roland, especially, that was one of the questions we were asked on Twitter, actually. We were asked somebody, a Niall Foster, what do you think of the Polka Dot Ensemble supported by Pierre Roland? Slated on Twitter, but I quite like it, he says. Uh, that, I mean, let's yeah. get to the really important issues first. <laughs> yeah. Pierre Roland, his uh, Polka Dot outfit. The, the helmet, the, the top, the shorts, everything. Yeah, yeah. I, I It was a throwback to Michael Rasmussen. Yeah. I, because of the Kevin chicken team, chicken favorite. fox. It's, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really ugly. Yeah, it was really ugly. Awful. Someone mentioned it was chicken pox, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what did you make of his move, Julien? It seemed to me that it was a, it's a massive miscalculation. They thought they were sprinting for the mountains points, and then the, they went about three kilometres too early. I and have, I think it was I him have, and David Malacane. I, I have to say, I'm, I'm, I'm good friends with Andy Fricanger, his sports director, and I still don't know why. They've done that. I mean, I, I I appreciate what they did yesterday. Mm. You know, going front and you had his own. Didn't hurt. Like, yeah. I don't know. A few minutes of uh, good effort doesn't hurt. Uh, just like Froome did yesterday mm. was you know, okay. Today was a bit. I don't know. He's racing possible. quite aggressively. Roland is is he riding for? Uh, he is King riding of the Mountains. For GC. He is. No, but it's the King of the Mountains. Is, is so GC is his ambition, not King of the Mountains. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So that's why I mean you are puzzled. And I'm, I'm, I'm very puzzled pleased well. to hear that King of the Mountains is not his ambition because the sooner he gets out of that King of the Mountains jersey, the yeah. better. Vogler could get it. So. Vogler wore them last year, didn't he? He wore yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Julian, I spotted uh, some Cofidis cars uh, driving onto the ferry earlier. I didn't realise they were riding the tour. Um, what Europe? I didn't realise they were still in business. Europe car are uh, have been uh, you know a successful team um, the last couple of years, but. What about the other French teams? What, what's you know what's going on with them? They're not good. I mean, yeah. Well, FDG are. Um, they're they're they're, they're, an, they're mounting, aggressive. Yeah, team. yeah, they're mounting quite a challenge for uh, yeah, Pinot this Pino. year. And uh, yeah. we, I mean, we've seen them, you know, in front of the bunch a few times already, which is a huge challenge for them. Mm. Um, yeah, from quite surprising. Previous years. Quite surprising yesterday, Julien. Though when they, I don't know whether that was a, a kind of admission of weakness because they're so worried about Pino's descending that they had to get him to the front on what wasn't a difficult think, descent or whether it was a statement of intent. Yeah, the, the idea was, uh, when we spoke to Maggio yesterday, and the idea was you know, to skim the peloton so that, you know, that for the finish there are only, you know, there are, there are already some new riders eliminated, you know, far back mm. and make it a safer finish. Mm. And it's, it's not a bad move. Mm. Mm. No, but it's quite pessimistic, isn't it? They are quite pessimistic about Pino's ability to handle sort of difficult descents, difficult I'm, I'm finishes. I'm not sure no? it's about to descent. It's just that, you know, if you have a finish with 200 riders, it's, yeah. you know, it's got some problems. And if it's a mm. finish with 80 riders, it's you know, safer and, you know, for themselves and for everyone How about else. Pino, though? I mean, what, what, is he the real deal? What, what, you know, there must be a lot of excitement in France about him. Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, well, for the first time in... Many, many, many years. I mean, the French in the field they have a potential tour winner. I mean, at least top contender. I mean, mm. he may never win the tour, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he was in the top five this, this year. So <laughs> let's let's take a little break there, and we'll come back and talk about uh, the team time trial. This is the humansinvent.com Tour de France podcast, powered by Sharp. We've moved from the, our residence in the bar. We're now in the restaurant in the Mega Smeralda. Uh, so let's talk finally, chaps, about the team time trial uh, tomorrow back in Nice on the mainland. Uh, nice kind of flat flat stage, 25 kilometres, a long stretch along the promenade des Anglais. Daniel, what are you thinking? Who do you fancy for the team time trial? Um, I think the. In spite of Tony Martin's injury, I would I would say that Omega Pharma Quick Step are among the favourites, if not the favourite. Um, he's quite optimistic, Tony Martin, that he'll be fine by the first rest day, back to full fitness. Even today, I think you said, Rich, he finished in the front group. He's in the front group today. Yeah, and, and apparently um, when he holds the, the tri-bars, 
the, his injured elbow um, is, is not really affected by his position on the bike. He, he's not touching the um, armrests with with the wound, so he's actually okay. So I think. And they have a know, fast team, and, and Mark Cavendish is somebody you sometimes overlook. But he is a fantastic uh, team time trial. Yeah, I think fantastic physically in the team time trial because of the speed he's got. That's something that he always talks about, how you need speed in team time trials. And actually sprinters can be very valuable riders in team time trials. But also um, as, a, as a motivator, you know, we, I think we've all heard stories about... Well, I heard around. a story today. You did, but that's, is that, classified, is that, is that embargoed? that's classified for the moment. Oh, Rich, yeah. Damn. Uh, well, you spoke to Rolf Aldag, the technical director, I think his title is it? Oh my god, Pharma Chris. Yes. Rolf Aldag, who was his old director, of course, at HCC Columbia, and he told you a little bit about Tony Martin and about their approach to the team time trial tomorrow. Rolf, one thing on tomorrow, the team time trial, as the sort of technical manager of the team, in terms of equipment, what are going to be the main considerations tomorrow on a time trial like that? Well, for me, we probably put a really, really big gear on it to give it a chance to go fast. How big? Well, Tony always rides a 58 and uh, 58.11. And uh, you, come, you come to a limit uh, to follow if you're only, only on 54, for example. Because we felt that on a slightly down in the World Championships, and Tom Warner was really, really a good cyclist. He suffered on Tony's wheel because, you know, with the frequency, you come to a point to say, yeah, 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 I have to keep the power and the frequency. It just doesn't work. Yeah. Well, we probably underestimated that before the race, how fast Tony would go on a slight downhill, keeping the pressure, uh, keeping the power on with that big gear because that's really then on the downward limits. Yeah. You, can say you just cannot hold 460 watts with the frequency of, of 150 over time in a team time trial. That will not, they will not work. So I think that's something uh, that, that we're thinking of to say. Uh, it's flat. We don't know how the wind is right now, but somehow if it comes from the coast, we will see a situation with tailwind, yeah. and we just don't want to be under gear. And you can always go 12 and 13, mm. but you cannot go 10 if you don't have it. So yeah. I think that's, that's a point for us. Otherwise, yeah, we have, we have our routine. I mean, we will do the course in the morning. They will have a look at it. We will try to find the best order, which is basically kind of like, you know, a guy who can really speed it up, a guy who can hopefully keep yeah. it, a guy who can speed it up if needed, a guy who can keep it, mm. instead of uh, the strongest guys behind each other. And then you always have a drop in speed yeah. and a pickup. So we want to have the, the speed as steady as possible. Yeah. And it still has to be decided, like, because the position in front of Tony... It's not an easy one, mm. so we'll hopefully find the best solution. And Cav is a real asset in team time trials, isn't he? I mean, he's got a fantastic record. And he can guide it pretty well. I mean, he can. The team is motivated, but he can really like get the best out of out of them, out mm. of the guys. Because it's really important, you know, to to approach it as a team and not as nine guys doing individual time trials try to shine and be a yeah. hero. That they, they will never never succeed on a team time trial. Yeah. The Tour de France with humansinvent.com. Innovation, craftsmanship and design. So that was Rolf Aldag. Julian, what are you thinking for the team time trial tomorrow? What's your, uh, what's your prediction? I, I agree with uh, Daniel. I mean, given that you know, Tony Martin was in league group today, they've also got Chavanel who I mean, crushed the field with a weak field. Just because he's yeah. French? No, no, he's, he's been great for me. We've, we've seen him already twice. You know, going along at the front uh, in the last two days. Kwiatkowski could be in yellow. And Kwiatkowski too could be in yellow. So yeah, He's fourth but, overall at the moment. There's a there's a clutch of riders just a second down. I mean, well, no, that's the that's the stage finish, Rich. No, no. Simon Gerrard. Oh really? Yeah. Should we have Simon second? Yeah. Yes. I don't think we'll see him but in yellow tomorrow. We'll no, I don't think we'll see him. <laughs> no, there's a whole uh, there's you know seventy three riders, seventy two riders at one second down on GC. Miller's the one we've been talking about, but Boston Hagen is another. Boston Hagen's a, a, a decent prospect. Well, I wouldn't expect them to be in the top three with Thomas Inge. Well, exactly. That's a huge loss to them, isn't it? To Team Sky. Uh, I, th- I think it's going to be short rotation, so mm-hmm. I'm, I wouldn't count them out. I mean, you know, I mean, Stannard looked you know, better today. Yeah, he did. Pete, yeah. Pete kind of, I think he just 
there is Ripley, you know, dropped out. Yeah, in, interesting. In the climbs today. At one point, yeah, and we what, saw. And, and that's and uh, I think Saxo did this exactly the same. That's interesting. They had they had four guys, you know, falling yeah. behind, you know, in the second part Lopez of the stage. and Kirianka yeah. both yeah, got true. dropped, uh, yeah. and we we watched that and thought, what's going on there? That could, do you think that could have been because? I I think so. Yeah. I mean, I didn't notice for Sky, but apart from Kenneth, I, mean, uh, I noticed the four Saxo bank mm. or Saxo think of riders. Dropping behind, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised that you know Saxo would uh, you know, do pretty well to like top mm. five, maybe. I mean, it's uh, it's a difficult one to predict, isn't it? Because usually, you know, there are a series of teams that always go well in team time trials, but so many teams in this tour have picked riders with really with a, a climbing bias, a mountain bias. Yeah. You look at the Garmin Sharp lineup, and they're not as strong on paper as they would usually be in a team time trial. And the same applies to Sky, the same applies to, I think, perhaps to a certain extent, BMC. I mean, if you were, you, we were at the team presentation the other day, Rich, and we were struck by what an imposing um, team physically, the likes of Argos Shimano and, and Lotto Bellisol. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you, you consider the... You consider the nature of the route. Julia, you have to leave. You're, you're going. You've yeah, so thanks, yeah. Bastian. Okay. Oh. Right, well, thank you very much for joining See us tonight. Around. Thanks, Jeez, Julia. Bye. Au revoir. Off he goes. No, I was saying, Rich, that, that, you know, the most imposing sort of teams physically are, are teams like Argos Shimano, and you, you take into account the route tomorrow, and it really is a bit of a drag run, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it is. It's 25 I, I don't see them being I don't see them being in contention, I but... Think, I think Garmin Sharp, if you look at their... They, they, they've got... You know some very good experienced riders. They won the team time trial two years ago. Some of the survivors from that team: Christian Van der Velde, David Miller, obviously. Uh, uh, rider Hesjedal is a real asset there. Jack Bauer as well. He's riders like that are strong. Rohan Dennis. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting to see their tactics tomorrow because in the past they're one of the teams that have often finished time trials with five riders, six riders, um, and you know they can afford to drop a couple of guys tomorrow. They've got. They've not got the same general classification ambitions that they might have had in the past or I think they're hedging their bets slightly they're not sure whether Hegedal Hegedal darling their bets but yeah they're, they're not sure yet whether <coughs> um, Martin Hegedal will be in contention on GC overall oh, Orica Green Edge won today and they've got a strong team for the team time trial as well I think. they have and a, and a good team for that kind of course a very flat course great well listen let's wrap it up there because we've got to travel somehow to Nice uh, how are you getting to Nice? I think I'm getting the plane tomorrow morning but <coughs> I'm not in charge of logistics. So you, okay, so you I'll might just be go getting, where someone tells me. Yeah, no, I'm getting a plane. Yeah. You are getting a plane. Yeah, I'm getting a plane as well. Well, I'll see you in Nice, Daniel. All right, and see we'll, you, Rich. We'll look forward we'll, we'll to have that. The, we've got something to really look forward to, which is meeting up with Lionel. And leaving the Mega Smeralda. And leaving the boat, but meeting up with Lionel Burney, who will be joining us on the podcast yeah. from tomorrow. He's fre- fresh from Glastonbury. Yep. Looking forward to his input. Um, I think we're going to launch a competition tomorrow as well, finally. So please tune in.